What is going on YouTube? This is Jim, joined by my lovely wife, Miss Rachel. How are you? I'm great, Jim. How are you? I'm really excited because today we are opening up this ginormous box that yes. is the Gallahorn. We are indeed opening up a giant box. So I'll go ahead and let you figure out how you want to open it, and I'm going to do some yapping to the crew. Okay. So Destiny is a really important game, I think, in the last, I don't know, I'd say the last five or so years because... It really did blend a lot of good combat with an interesting RPG element to it. And I think, undeniably, one of the most popular guns from original Destiny was the Gallahorn. Now, I wasn't one of those people who was lucky and got the Gallahorn like everybody else on those RNG drops right at the beginning. I got mine much later on. It was actually a pity epic, or no, welfare epic. That's what they used to call them in Warcraft. The welfare epic from Xur weeks 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 and months and years and decades after galley had already been nerfed and i think it was right before the iron gallahorn came out as part of the uh wolves expansion not wolves house of iron house of iron rise of iron what was the name of the white playstation we got uh the taken king the taken king well i thought there's a rise of iron i know it doesn't matter the point is Gallahorn is a very cool weapon, and despite the fact that I didn't earn it like everyone else did, I still enjoyed the hell out of it. And as a matter of fact, all of the major kills that I got and all the rating that I did was a result of the Iron Gallahorn. Wow. Holy smokes. This is a giant. It's huge. Now, I would like to point out to everyone to that on out. the front, it says plus 17. It also says not a toy. No, this is not. This is the real Gallahorn. We're going to so, shoot. The last part of this video is we're going to blow up our house, our, na our neighbor's I mean, backyard. It, it is a rocket launcher, so. So, I mean, my first exotic was not Gallahorn. It was stupid. Uh, what was the name of that machine gun? Um, Super Good Advice. That's the name. It was called Super Good Advice. It was a heavy weapon. It was a machine gun that had like a 2x zoom on it. But the recoil was so ridiculous on it, it was completely useless. So all my friends are getting all these cool exotics. Thorn, Hawkmoon, the Galley, Juju, uh, Bad Juju. No, what do I get? I get super good advice. And it sucked. And that began the beginning of an otherwise toxic RNG drop throughout most of Destiny 1 for me. But, but despite all that, I really did like Destiny. So... Um, not as big of a fan of Destiny 2 as I am a 1. I think it's going to be, I don't know, I think maybe the drops are a little too easy, but undeniably Gallahorn, such a cool name, such a cool looking weapon. I think Bungie did a really good job with um, making each exotic feel unique. And Gallahorn with its iconic wolf pack rounds that when you hit a target, it exploded and then more rockets came out and hit another target was definitely the downfall of every boss that I played in all the uh, raids because everyone's like, all right, we're gonna go hit uh, Oryx and two swords and then everybody stands there shoulder to shoulder and fire galleys now and everybody doo -doo 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 shoots out galleys. So I got my hands on this weapon in the game and I enjoyed it. And here we have it. Now it's gonna go on the armory, which is the wall that uh, I have behind me with the Lancer, the Retro Lancer, I don't know how it's going to fit in just yet because it seems like it's going to be really massive. And normally I display boxes, but I don't think we'll be able to display this box. I don't think we will either. Now, is that easy to pull out? Like, is that... Uh, was this a GameStop exclusive, by the way? Yes. So a little bit on the... on the game. I'm holding the box for you if you can get that tab. There we go. It's coming down. Just wiggle a little bit, maybe. Most of our replica weapons are by PNP. Um, PNP does a lot of really good replica type um, weapons. Like yep. they did the Lancer, they did the maybe got to stand up. I don't know. They did the Retro Lancer. They also did all those Nintendo uh, Amiibo display stands that we have. Yep, they sure did. Um, this is not by PNP. This is by McFarland. Yep. Todd McFarland, the creator of Spawn created this bad boy here holy smokes wow. just to give you a perspective my hand is way over here this thing is huge it is it is ginormous right. so I, I have to say it's packaged pretty well i'm gonna set it back here i'll let you do all the uh ripping and tearing okay i don't know how it needs to. i'm assuming it's probably in like two or three parts 
Yeah, and it's probably put that way. together. Let's loop it around here. I'm trying to hit the uh, kickstand okay. for the camera if we can. But that's okay. If it's it's very hard to film something this large because you'd have to have a really wide angle, and we're using a webcam, so it is what it is. But I could tell you up front, looking at it, I already like it. It looks pretty cool. It looks like what it looked like in the game, which is good, right? Well, I, yeah, I was going to say, shouldn't it? Yeah, um, it's kind of... Yeah, I haven't had much... I'm trying to think of any collectibles I've had that were from Todd McFarlane, and I can't think of any McFarlane-branded stuff that we've gotten in the past. So I'm curious to see how this is going to look and the attention to detail that this is given versus like the Lancer or the Retro Lancer from PNP, which I found was really, really well done. Um, the, the Retro Lancer in particular, I thought, had a lot of really good detail put into it. And I'm curious to see if they, you know, I don't like, I didn't memorize this gun. I didn't memorize the galley. I mean, we shot it. We know what it looks like. We know what it does. So it looks like, um, there it looks is like your, a tube. Your, uh, here is part, tube. Here is part of galley. Um, okay. Interesting. There's a lot of like weird paint marks on the tube, like around the detail. So it's got this like plastic, you know, it's plastic painted on plastic, whatever. But there's some like, I guess it looks almost like maybe uh, like glue marks or something. Where I think you would expect an otherwise like nice smooth finish. You have a lot of this kind of like scuffs. There's some little chips in the plastic. I don't know. Okay, I'm gonna guess that it plugs in what, like this? I don't know. We gotta look at the box again. What's on the end? An orange cap is on the end. Yeah, the orange cap's on the end. And does it stick out like this? I'm assuming because it's got a. Or no, the other one's got clips. Maybe it goes in the other way because there's clips. How about like this? Is there clips there? No, those clips wrap head on those side right there? No, that's, that's not right. It goes the other way. It goes the other way. Back the other way. All right. Some assembly required. Don't worry. We're in the hands of professionals here. Um, it's got a groove here. Okay. It's got a groove. Oh, so it only goes in. Oh, there we go. Yes. Nice. Oh. Does it clip into place or something? I think it does. I just can't. It's got a push. You have to, oh, I heard a, like a light click there. Hmm. Wow. This thing is massive. I don't even know if we can get it all in one shot. Let me lean way back. Okay, just to give you a perspective of how big this is. It's in front of Rachel, and it's like, here's the tip of it by my fingers. Jeez. Wow. I don't know how this thing, why this thing isn't clipping in better, though. I feel like it should. There we go. Now it's got to get a little grease. Okay, we got it. Now, I noticed it said it has light up noises and sound effects and stuff. I assume there's batteries that probably come with it or something. I don't know if I really care about the batteries. I mean, it's going to just sit on the wall. Like, we're going to hang it up. I don't know if I necessarily need all the batteries and attachments. There's something over here on this side. Looks like a piece of plastic. Oh, what's inside here? A piece of plastic. Does it have any kind of like manual or anything with it? I'm not sure. I'm, there's something else attached to the box that I'm working on getting out right now. Okay. Let's see. I don't know what this thing is. It's some sort of handle with plastic on it. And there's like, like a scope maybe or something? I feel yep, like that's what it's missing. Is some, okay, I was going to say, it feels like there's some kind of like scope piece that actually has, uh, yeah. <laughs> that's funny. I assume it just clips on bolts on something maybe um let's see yeah it should it should right. go the other way because you want the sights towards the front maybe i would think you would, i i'm looking at the clips now and i would think you'd want it down here so that the bird is facing not okay. upside down i would think this is clearly not on a picatinny rail guys so it is not a standard mounting configuration. Whoa! Just knocked those fell off and hit me in the face. There we go. Okay, uh, I got one side it. No, that's it. It just hangs. I, I guess. I don't, I don't. I don't know what this part of the gun is. There was a piece of plastic wrapped around her. I don't know. I think that's it. All right, okay. I'm gonna give you galley. Okay. And 
I like how they put the orange cap on the end, so this is not mistaken as a real rocket launcher. Uh, yeah, clearly. I don't know why, sure. like, this is so fake of a weapon, like, I mean, I, there must be some law that says, like, oh, you can't have a plastic, you, you have to have a red, can all, all replica weapons must have a, the scissors uh, okay over there, you good? Yeah, I'm good. All replica weapons must have a uh, orange cap. I guess so. I, I mean, know. I'm going to tape over that like I probably did with the Lancer and Retro Lancer. So, attention to detail, like, what do you think? Like, walk me through what you're seeing, what do you... How does it feel? How does it look? Is it authentic? Is it ugly? Like, this thing wasn't cheap. This was like, what? How much? $170. <gasps> so you could... <laughs> That's a lot of money. <laughs> okay. Okay, well, I mean, you're paying for, like, the thing to me that stood out most on Galley was the wolf, like, the, the, um, the helmet, like, on the front with, like, the eagle kind of looking thing. And there's a lot of pop and detail on the actual barrel of the gun. So, like, all these kind of emblems and everything, that's what always stood out to me on Galley. Now, when you shot it, you were really holding it behind you. So, the HUD is not obviously, like, illuminated. That must be where the battery is there. Yeah, and I'm, quite honestly, I'm a little bit disappointed that they put that on the same side as the scope. I would agree. I was just getting ready to say that. Um, I, I, I would have thought that they Why were... couldn't they put it on the other side? What's on the other side? Just more plastic? Nothing. I would honestly think because of that battery case, I would think you would want to display it the other way. Yeah, I would. Too. You're going to miss out on the scope, and I don't know what this handle is. Is this so you carry it? it? There's a handle on the other side, too. I don't know what those are for. I guess it's just detail. It's not big enough to hold. It's just like a little lip. Um, oh, okay, and that's... I was going to say, I thought there was a piece that came down somehow. Is there... Is there like a little piece of plastic or something in there? Yeah. Is that what that was? Oh, okay. So you would hold galley over your, um, no, yeah, the other way. Yes, but it's a little, it's a little large. I got to see, what is it? You got to like pose for me. Like I got to see, whoa, it'll point the rocket at your face. You kill yourself, bro. What are you talking about? The rocket launches out of the front. Uh, you're holding it oh. backwards, bro. That's what I keep trying to tell you. You're right. Yeah, I yeah. am. There goes. Our, oh, geez. Watch the bookshelf behind you. Oh, God. Oh, Rach. Oh, geez. Go stand over there. Go away. Go off camera and we'll take a picture. You're going to knock this poor bookshelf off. All right. What do you think? Now, you got to put your, your right hand on the trigger. So your hands are inverted. That's your. Okay. So, yes. Yes. That is how you fire a galley. That is exactly. How you would fire a galley just like that and you would lean kind of like you'd hold it up into your shoulder and you would lean back and you would shoot it into and you would dominate the competition yes. with a bazillion rockets exactly okay you would not right. knock off the this you're leaning back too much though it's the only thing i'm trying to i'm warning you you could hurt our games but be honest like tell me what do you think okay, um, we, we agree the battery we agreed the battery is in a dumb position. Yes. It's stupid. The fact that the battery case is in the front and not in the back, and that you have the sound speaker for what I assume is probably the pew pew. Yes. Right here in the front, it totally takes away. There are so many places inside this figure where, this, where you could have hidden. Yes. Uh, you could have hidden it somewhere else. Now, there's a lot of like, um, so that I'm not happy with. I think that looks really ugly, and I think that's a big misstep. Now, what however, you, there ahead. is a huge amount of detail that's been put into this gun. Yes. Um, you know, between the, the, the inlays, if you will. The plastic inlays. Now, do you think uh, there's some leather strapping here with little, like, emblems here? Yes. I feel like this, they're on both sides. Yep. I feel like for this kind of money, <laughs> those probably should have been real leather. Or real straps, real buckles. If you want to cheap out on the handle, and even though it's supposed to be like, I assume wood or some kind of piece of like leather, if you want to like um, leave that just painted plastic, that's fine. But I feel like to really make this thing pop, I don't remember the back being such a matte finish as opposed to the front being more shiny. Right. I don't remember that. I'll have to go back and look and see if um, we'll, we'll compare it to the original Destiny like gun. We'll compare. Like we'll look and yeah. see. Um, there's also some places where the, the paint doesn't quite 
line up and it looks a little, I don't know, a little, little cheap. They could have done a lot better on a lot of the paint lines to the point that, yeah, it looks, it looks sloppy in a lot of places and it looks like it could have been done with a lot more attention to detail to really make those lines stand out better. Yeah. Because they like overpainted on the top of the lines where you have like, where it's, you think it'd be nice and smooth. Yeah. It's suddenly painting and then like the painting stops. Or, or it's like double painted almost or something. Yeah. It just, and, it's not a smooth paint finish. It's got some, right. Uh, it's got some, some roughness to it. Which roughness. I, would I, agree. I wouldn't expect. Okay. So I would agree with you. Paint-wise, maybe they could have done a little better. I think the attention to detail, from what I can tell, it looks like it's pretty good. I like that they thought of things like the little handle. Like I, I compare this to, to me, what was the best thing that we bought, which was the um, Lancer. Right. And how the Lancer had the ripcord for the chainsaw bayonet, and it had the scope, and it had the tactical light. Like They really put a lot of attention to detail on how this thing would be operational. Yeah. So other than the handle which you could deploy and hold out, and the trigger, um, that really doesn't leave a lot. The scope, I guess, is okay, but you really kind of lose a lot it's of the kind detail. Of, it's kind of flimsy. It is. I was going to say, you lose a lot of it the way it's, you just press it on with these two plastic clips, and it just wobbles. Like, yeah. if you shake it, it just wobbles. The back of the gun wobbles. Like, I feel like this could be way better than it is in terms of, you know, like, look execution. and feel. The execution... The idea is good, right? And it looks like they they put some good design features into it. Okay. Um, almost like they they modeled it well. Like they thought, like this is we we got the scaling down. We yeah. know that the front needs to have like the attention to the, the ornate right. details. It's got to have the long rocket thing out the back, the trigger, the, all that stuff. Yeah. And then they like the, printed the it. The actual execution and making and painting leaves. A lot to be desired. I would agree with you. So now we have it. We have it. Do you feel like you got your money's worth? Do you feel like this is way overpriced? Do you feel like this is a plastic toy? What do you expect? Like, what are your? Give me some reviews for it. And while you're doing that, I'm gonna go hold it over here off camera, and I'm gonna let you <laughs> have the floor. So, okay. Um, carry on. I guess I'm I'm still looking at it, trying to get a, a good look. You know, from a distance, it looks way better from a distance than it does up close. Yep. And the good news is, is we're going to mount it on our armory wall. And our armory wall is a bunch of plastic replica toys. I mean, not toys as per the box. Um, I, I would say this is probably a good, I, I, I think I like the Lancers better. I think I'm going to rate this at about a, uh, and you got to remember price is also a factor. I'm gonna rate this at about a six and a half out of ten. A six and a half out of ten. Okay. What about you, Jim? What? Are, how well, would you rate this? Okay, so I just, not a toy. I had to go stand over there and like rehearse pretending that I was the Exo Titan shooting Oryx, like because that's what we used. You didn't want to be a hunter? No, hunter. What is hunter? What are you talking about, hunter? Who's a hunter? Okay. I don't think this is like the best thing I've ever seen, but it's really cool. Um, there's a lot of stuff that bothers me. The paint job on the places bothers me. The scope attachment's really weird. Like if you go stand up and actually hold the scope as if you were gonna shoot through the rocket, they didn't completely finish the bottom of like the part that you look through. So the eye hole actually goes down and you see into the floor. It's not like, I, I don't know what they did. It's just cheap. They're just like, they only like, imagine like a, a tube and yeah. they didn't finish the bottom. So instead of being like an O, it's like an upside on U. So the bottom is open. You could stick your hand up under there. I don't like that. Um, but for what it is, I think it's really cool. The price, though, seems like really expensive. Like, I would honestly say out of everything we've gotten, and we've gotten a lot of collector editions. We've gotten the Lancer. We've gotten the other Lancer. We've gotten just all the fat heads we have, the, the posters, all the... Um, all that kind of collector edition stuff. Yeah. This is the first thing that I would honestly have said, I wouldn't be heartbroken if you said, we don't want to keep it and take it back. Like honestly, because there are a lot of flaws with it. That said, going on the wall, having something that's an iconic piece of destiny lore is really kind of cool, but there's just a lot of scratches and scuffs and like inconsistencies that just, 
yeah. are outstanding flaws that I'm just looking at and I'm like, like it doesn't look right. And I'm, I'm overlaying. I mean, we, I went back while we're watching this and I'm editing in pictures and you'll see some of the things that I'm pointing out that's like, that's a crack, that's a scratch. And for the price, like this thing should be nearly perfect. If you took the worksmanship out of it though, there's still a lot of quality issues that just kind of make you look at it and go, well, maybe it's not like the best it could be. Yeah. At a distance though, I think it's going to look good. You're going to look at it and go, oh, that's really cool. It's immediately recognizable what it is. Yes. When you get up close though, as opposed to the Lancer, I think you're going to look at this and say, you know, this could have been a little better. They could have taken a little more care in detailing and quality and parts. Not just different types of plastic and stickers, but different materials all together to really make it stand out more than it could have. Well, and also the way that it was manufactured, right. it makes it very hard for you to have a distinction between the silver and the black in places. Yeah. And you can see, especially back here, right. where they have overspray and stuff like yes, that. Yes. And it just doesn't look quite right. Now, I can't fault them on how they've put it together because um, right. true true weapons would be like steel, have, well, but, but they have no, a lot of them are made out of, of plastic type, so they have these kind of join marks. I understand. So, so that there's going to be seams, and I right, understand. So, so that's got to be built somehow. So that I'm not upset about because that is realistic to yeah, an actual weapon. Right, right. It's the the overspray and the stickers that aren't quite lined up right, and the I the inconsistencies in paint. I'm going to give it a 5 out of a 10 because I feel like whoever made this, I'm not saying it was Todd McFarlane like sitting in his basement like tinkering, clearly didn't capture the charm of what the weapon was. And this is, looks just like one of those things where you send it off to some factory in like Korea or something. It says made in China. So you, fact, you factor off to China and say, make me 100,000 of these and bring them back. That's what this reminds me of. It was like a... Instead of somebody really sitting down and saying, you know, what really makes the Gallahorn unique? Like, why couldn't these silver pieces be like that fake plated chrome stuff that like those little emblems that you get sometimes in like loot crates? Or like, why couldn't those pop out and have more luster than the gun? Why couldn't the colors of the gun be the same? Like, Again, I don't even need them to be chromed, I would, but I do need them to be a separate piece. They need to stand out. I, I, they need, don't I need them stand to be the separate because the weapon, the, the Gallahorn would have them as a separate decorative piece. It would not be one constant piece of plastic. I agree. So that's so So we beat this up pretty hard, but all things considered, I think it's for what it is, it's pretty cool. I really have to do some thinking though before we hang it on the wall to say would I rather keep this or go buy spend a little extra more and get like the replica needler or the replica energy sword, or another lancer and do the cross like I wanted to do a long time ago, or something else. Because this looks like something you would get at like a trade show for like significantly less price. About than half like, the price? Than like a museum type quality collector piece that you would hang on the wall and say this is something that deserves the attention that it's going to receive. Yeah, it's... And well, and then if you go online and you look places... They have things like Hawk Moon and Thorn that right. somebody else has created that you can buy. Right. So I got to give it some thought. But it's cool. We had it. We have it. We may have had it past tense. We'll see. But I wanted to give you guys some thoughts on it because we're crazy enough to buy this kind of stuff and hang it on the wall and display it and, um, you know, enjoy it. I just don't know when I come up to play Destiny 2 tomorrow and this thing's on the wall, am I going to look at it and go, oh, that looks like junk. I don't know. I got to think about it. Well, not when you're first walking in the room because you'll be far enough away. That... Too, oh, when you're far enough away, it's like, is that the galley? And then you walk close, you're like, oh, no, it's just a no, it's just it's a, a plastic, plastic, it's just a plastic uh, knockoff. So thank you so much for uh, partaking in this journey with me. We're going to take some uh, still shots and hang them up and put it over our shoulders and pretend to be guardians for the next few minutes. And thank you so much for watching. Comment, rate, subscribe. Let us know if you guys got this. What do you think about it? What do you think about some of the other collector pieces? Based on what I've seen with McFarlane, I think PDP has nothing to worry about in terms of like losing market share. This is definitely significantly lower tier than anything I've bought in to up to date. Yeah, let us know what other what other types of replicas we should be looking at. Right, let us know. Maybe we're missing something. Maybe there's another galley that's better. Yeah. Maybe the iron galley is better. Maybe. Maybe. 
Thank you guys so much for watching. Get out there and invest in some cheap plastic of your own. And until next time, we will see you guys on the other side.